I am the examiner. Why are you here? To examine. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello and welcome to the Shallow Proclamation. My name is Paul, and I'm joined by Thomas. And uh, we are. Uh, if you're just joining us now, this is a good point to join us because we're in the beginning of a new era of Doctor Who. We have finished William Hartnell. Um, we still need to go back and do a little bit of a review of that, but we're ploughing on with our um, watch through of the series. And uh, yeah, we're we're two stories into series four. Uh, William Hartnell's Doctor has just regenerated for the first time, um, and Patrick Troughton has appeared on our screen. Um, okay, can I just say William Hartnell's jo Doctor has also regenerated for the last time, hasn't he? I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, very much so. Well, um, we <laughs> yeah, and so we're about to dive into the first Patrick Troughton story, our first second Doctor story. I mean, Thomas, how are you feeling about this? You've not seen. You've not seen any classic Who really at all, so you don't know. I'm guessing you don't know a lot about Patrick Troughton, or no. Um, I have to admit, as I was queuing up this episode on BritBox, the title was a slight giveaway as to who the villain might be. Sorry, you froze. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you said the the title was a slight. Oh. <laughs> You froze at that point as well. It's like it's a cursed thing. Oh, yeah. it's clearly so you can say it this time. You can't say the title without... It's like uh, the Scottish play. <laughs> Genuinely, like literally as you were about to say it, you froze. <laughs> so weird. Okay. The title is a slight giveaway as to who the monster of the story might be. <laughs> um, yes. But so now I'm very excited. But also... Uh, we we just watched, as you were mentioning, uh, an adventure in space and time, uh, which that felt like a very logical place to watch it at the at the turn of uh, the uh, Doctor, the the first Doctor to second Doctor, and that got me very excited for the Trout and just set that little scene he has at the end um, where he's like, "Who's who?" Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we got quite emotional. Didn't we? I, when I was editing it, I was because I didn't see you like your screen during it because I the Doctor Who the the uh, film was filling my screen. But as I was editing, it's like at that moment when Matt Smith comes in, you were like <laughs> you were bawling your eyes out. <laughs> it is it is very um, yeah. Even editing it again, I was like, oh, this does really uh, yeah. It's quite profound, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. So you should go and check that out if you've not seen our uh, if you've not seen our reaction to that. Go and watch it. If you've not watched it, don't watch our reaction first. Go and watch it first, and then yes. watch the reaction. <laughs> yes, watch watch the actual film first, and then uh, and yeah, and then you can come to our channel to try and watch it in spite of the two presenters. Yeah, um, but uh, yeah. Yes. So, like you say, we're getting into Power of the Daleks, uh, which, you know, to be honest, even if you hadn't seen the title, you would have seen the title on the screen literally with after the credits rolled. So, you know, it's not a huge giveaway, the fact that you've seen that. Um, yeah, so, I mean, this is uh, first Patrick Trout story, broadcast the 5th of November to the 10th of December 1966, directed by Christopher Barry, written by David Whittaker. Um, so, it's the first televised Dalek story um, not to be written by Terry Nation, so all, so we might get a bit of a change of feel. Is it? Um, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, and actually after this, I think for the remainder of the classic series, I think every Dalek story is now called Something of the Daleks. Uh, so this is where it all begins with the power of the Daleks um, here. Uh, it's a six-parter. Um, it's the only... Uh, Doctor, it's the only sort of first story for a Doctor that's more than four parts. Um, six part, they're all lost, sadly, so it is entirely, it's been animated, so we don't have to watch a recon. Um, there is some surviving footage, and we should definitely have a look at some of that on YouTube once we're done, so you can get a bit of a feel of it. Um, but yeah, they've animated the whole thing. I imagine that's what's on BritBox that we're going to watch. Um, so uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, yeah. Yeah, Fantastic. that kind of tees us up for it. And so, yeah, let us, we're going to dive into this and we're going to get our first taste of Patrick Troughton, or you're going to get your first taste of Troughton. Um, and so do let us know what you guys think of this story uh, down in the comments. 
Um, and of course, give the channel a like and a subscribe if you're enjoying it. Pass it on to others as well because um, we like having more people on board. It's all good fun. Exactly. First taste of rainbow trouton and chips. Um, Getting the puns in. <laughs> So is this the first time we've had a pre-credits sequence? Oh, I think it is. Yeah, I don't know if this... straight in with the dun dun dun. I don't know if this was pre-credits in the actual thing or whether this is just to get you into it. Right. I've only seen this once. I bought it on DVD. It only came out in the last few years, the animation, so... Oh, so this is quite a new anime. Yeah, nice quality. I say that, it's probably, probably maybe five or six years old, it's pre-Covid, so... I am quite sad to see Hartnell go, I have to say, as much as I'm excited. I, I feel like, you know, I really warmed to him. Um, he was quite a cold figure in the first few stories, in some ways, but... Uh, yeah, felt like... Yeah, he really did become the Doctor, in my eyes. Uh, yeah. I've actually got my dinner here. Someone commented, does Thomas ever stop eating? <laughs> and in this case, it is my actual uh, dinner, so... Uh, <laughs> this is cool. I wasn't sure how much uh, post-regeneration de discombobulation there'd be. Mm. Um, but that's cool to see there is. Oh, interesting. Get that in um, when Capaldi regenerates into Whittaker, don't you? The real yeah, that's awesome. a nice throwback, isn't it? see a butterfly fit into a chrysalis case after it spread its wings. Then you did change. Life depends on change and renewal. Oh, so that's it. It's a good line about the butterfly fitting into a chrysalis. No corrosion, Ganley. Think of that. Well, corrosion. <laughs> that would get very annoying very quickly, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. I am the examiner. Why are you here? To examine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Oh. <laughs> it's a good little jump scare, isn't it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> what a nice. finish. Well, there we go. Episode one of uh, Patrick Troutman. So, what what your initial thoughts? Mm. Yeah, well, I suppose it's worth talking about him first um yeah it's quite it's, he's he's interesting isn't he he's quite a quite an unpredictable character i mean hartnell's doctor was in a way as well but trouton is quite different he's just sort of keeps wandering off and he seems like he always knows what he's doing but he doesn't really tell people mm. um, and then he has these little quirks like pulling out the recorder and uh just, standing very close to people with a magnifying glass. So he's a bit of an oddball, isn't he? But compelling. Mm. Compelling to watch. Uh, and I like the setup. I like... Mercury was always my favourite element at school. We had some in the lab in a test tube. Uh, and you could play with it and it felt really <clears> heavy. <throat> uh, someone told me that if we ever spilt it in the lab like if if you smash one of those test tubes they have they'd have to close the classroom and have like professionals to come in and deal with it mm. um it's apparently very toxic the phrase mad hatter comes from uh, people used to put mercury in their hats their top hats to make them shine and they actually started to go mad because of the uh when it sinks sinks through your skin it, it it's quite poisonous um uh -huh. So yeah, I thought that was interesting to have a planet with lots of mercury, and then just a great uh, introduction of the Daleks at the end. These kind of dormant ones. The modern era has done that quite a lot, hasn't it? With these kind of ones that are well, with Dalek in uh, Eccleston and uh, yeah, Dalek had Asylum. That, yeah, was that that kind of stone-looking one that's very mangled mm. and yeah, yep. What What about you? What did you? Uh, think of it yeah i mean it's an interesting start isn't it i mean it's hard to get a i mean it'd be interesting to know what people thought of Troughton when he first arrives you know um people who saw it at the time because i mean obviously for me i i've seen most of Troughton stuff i think and Troughton is one he's my favorite doctor by is it know, by a long way wow. um so i know so i'm obviously bringing that baggage to it so, so i'm looking at him in this and he's obviously 
Um, yeah, I mean, he doesn't feel like he's quite the doctor yet in, in the way that I think he becomes. Um, although, he, you know, he's there are, there are elements of it in there. I guess it's always hard being introduced, well, it's hard being introduced to a new doctor with no actual footage of the doctor. So you're relying entirely on the audio portrayal, you know, the visual thing might be good, but it's obviously not what Troughton was doing necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, so that's tricky. And that's a shame because in a sense, you're obviously you've got six episodes of that. And then we've got another recon after this one. Um, so you're not going to see some Troughton for about 10 episodes. <laughs> um, although we might see some surviving footage with him in, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I like the setting though. I think it picks up towards the end there. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a very kind of. I mean, what struck me is how quiet the whole thing is. Mm, like yeah. it's there's a lot of kind of gaps in in discussion and dialogue uh, where the doctor's examining something or walking around. There just seems to be a lot of space, and I think that kind of makes it feel a bit more tense. Every character that they've come in contact with, every person from this colony seems to be quite tense with each other. They all seem quite on edge. No one seems to be sort of at ease with one another. They're all kind of, you know, um, quite uptight. Uh, so that it, it does create a tension. And then, yeah, the scenes at the end going into the capsule were really good, I thought. Um, I think there's probably the best bits there. But what really struck me was just how well, I mean, I was gonna say how well lit it was, but I mean, Clearly, obviously, it, but it, you really got a sense that they were in this dim space, but you had yet the bits of light reflecting on the Daleks and stuff. So um, it's a really good job on that front. Um, yeah. And was that a Dalek mutant going under the door at the end? Yeah. Yeah. So that I think that's supposed to be the case. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's kind of the best view we've had of one so far. I mean, if it was like that in the... In the uh, the actual footage i don't know but uh yeah we got a tiny glimpse in the first dalek story um but i don't think we've had that many more since no not no i don't think we really have um vulnerable mm. little creature in a shell mm. of metal yeah but it's a nice idea to have the dalek sort of dormant there yeah rather than just sort of you know appearing all powerful so yeah so you know good start any other thing anything else to sort of add do you think no <laughs> oh. well in that case uh yeah let us know what you thought of the episode and join us soon for episode two until then take care bye bye goodbye